All right, some springs. Now, if you think about a spring, whenever you compress it or whenever you stretch it out, there is always a force trying to return that spring back to its original position, aka equilibrium. The, the position that the spring wants to be in that it isn't stretched, it isn't compressed, it's just right for that spring. Now, the equation that determines how much force the spring is trying to pull back towards equilibrium is this one. This is called Hooke's Law. Hooke's Law is the force of a spring equals negative k, which is the spring constant, so it's, it's just a number, uh, delta x, k times how far delta x you displace it. So I guess we could also use delta y. Let me talk about that negative for a second, why that's so important. So over here I have a spring with a box on it, and let's say and it's at equilibrium right now. It's just happy sitting there. Let's say, though, I take it and I stretch it down some delta x. So now, now the box is down here, right, and the spring is more stretched out, right, like this. Well, think about, think about it. I stretch the spring down delta x, and apparently, according to what I have, I'm saying this way is positive, right, because I pulled it downward, so I called down positive. Which way is the force going? The force is going back up, right? That's the way the force is going, force of spring. So the force is going to come out to be negative, because I call down positive, thus uh, up must be negative. So that's the importance of this negative sign right here, because if you stretch it down and you call down positive, the force, it goes the opposite way that you stretch it back up. So that's what the negative sign means. The force goes the opposite way that you stretch or compress the spring. Now this equation, just like with friction and just like with gravity, whenever you have a force of a spring, the very next line, you're going to be replacing Fs with negative k delta x, and then start substituting those things in. k is the spring constant, units for the spring constant, newtons per meter. All right, so now I'm going to work a couple of problems that are very uh, similar, in fact, just like a lab you will be doing in my class in the upcoming days. So I have a spring, and then I hang a mass on it. And whenever I hang my 350 gram mass, that spring stretches from its original equilibrium position, what it normally is like, right, down 12 centimeters. So a picture of that might look like this. I have a spring attached to something, right, uh, and I hang a mass on it, and it causes the spring to stretch downwards, and let's get that going on, downwards 0.12 meters. Now, I'm going to go ahead and pick positive and negative. I'm going to call up positive and down negative. So I already am realizing the spring is stretching down. That should be negative 0.12 meters. Let's get a free body diagram here. All right, so on my free body diagram, I went ahead and labeled everything. I have force of the spring going back up in the positive direction. Remember, I called up positive. And I have force of gravity, gravity pulling down on this mass. So I have force of gravity going down. The things don't have any forces going left or right in the x-axis. So all I have to deal with is the y. Now, writing everything down, I have Fs minus Fg equals ma. And my goal here is the spring constant. Now, looking at this, the, the mass is not moving. So here, uh, the acceleration, the net acceleration of this is going to be zero. All right. So I'm going to translate now my force of spring into k, negative k, delta x, minus, right, force of gravity turns into mg, equals, and since the acceleration of this entire object, you know, the, the box hanging on a spring over here, since it's not moving, the acceleration is zero. m times zero is just zero on that side. All right, so now let's start substituting in what we know. I, I'm looking for k, so negative k times delta x. Delta x is negative 0.12 because it was stretched downwards. So now you should be able to see mathematically the importance of this negative right here. This negative times that negative will make this force a positive, right? So going back up, very important. Uh, minus the mass that I hung on it, 350 grams, make sure we put that in kilograms, 0.35 right, times gravity, 9.81 equals zero. Well, all right, now it's just algebra. 
All right, and whenever I finish solving that all the way through, remember negative times a negative becomes positive, I get my spring constant to be 29 newtons per meter, 29 because of two sig figs there. All right, now spring constant is the constant for that spring, and that should make somewhat logical sense to you, right? Um, in other words, it does not change from circumstance to circumstance unless you stretch the spring out so far that it starts losing its elastic ability, right? You actually think of breaking the slinky, okay, stretching that metal slinky out too far. Um, so as long as you don't do that, the spring constant stays the same no matter what mass you hang on it, how far you stretch or compress it as long as you don't go too far. So I'm going to take the exact same spring and I want to find out what mass will uh, stretch the spring down to 17 centimeters. So I'm changing the delta x. Right now it's going to be negative 0.17. So the free body remains the same. The equation remains the same. A is still zero, right? The only difference here is in my negative k Delta X is now going to be uh, negative 0.17, all right? And then I'll just continue to solve from there for you. All right, so I'm looking for the mass here, right? The mass that uh, is pulling the spring downwards. So whenever I work that algebra through, I come out with my mass equal to 0 0.50 kilograms whenever I'm dealing with sig figs here. This is probably also a good time to remind you um, about not using negative 9.81 for gravity. You already dealt with that negative here on the outside of that force minus mg directly from your free body diagram. All right, so work another problem here. Um, I have a person gets into a, it's, I think it's called the reverse bungee cord ride. Uh, you'll find these at Six Flags and others where uh, a couple of people or one, per one person gets into this little, um, I guess, uh, roll cage almost. It's a steel cage with two bungee cords attached to it, and they either pull you all the way down or, or they have you clamped in and the wires tighten. But for our, for our case, we're going to pull the person um, down a distance of uh, 30 meters. Okay, um, and so then, then they'll be down here and the bungee cords are taut, right? And we're going to consider these bungee cords going straight up and down vertically so we don't have to deal with the angles. Um, and then they release you and you go shooting off, right, uh, up, up forward, a, a big massive acceleration going up into the air and then you come up all the way in the air and come back down and oh, oh what fun, right? So a free body diagram of this would look something like this. I have two springs going upwards, right, calling up positive and force of gravity coming down negative, and, and I expect there to be a massive acceleration going up. You know, the second it's released, it shoots off up in the air. All right, so now in the y-axis here, I have sum of the forces equals ma, and let's just go ahead and fill that in. So I have force of spring 1 plus force of spring 2 minus the force of gravity equals ma. Next step, just go ahead and start breaking those apart into their equations, negative k delta y here uh, plus negative k delta y of spring 2 minus mg equals ma. And now I can start substituting things in here. A couple of things I need to point out to you here. Remember negative k delta y negative times negative 30 because we stretched it downwards 30 meters, right? It, since we pulled it down 30 meters, I have to call it negative 30 for my displacement there. So these two uh, become positives, negative times a negative. I, I also, since it's the exact same spring, right, going the same distance, I mean it's two different springs, but same spring constant, same uh, displacement, I could have called that 2 times negative k delta y. Instead I just wrote it out. All right, and so now we're just down to algebra solving for a. All right, so once I have substituted everything in, my 120 newton per meter spring constant, my displacement of 30 meters, right, M times A, notice I used 165, that's mass of the shot, plus the one person that's in there, right, um, so the mass of the actual steel apparatus that's protecting him as they get shot up into the air, right, so 165, solve all the way through, I get 34 meters per second squared. Now that's actually in terms of G's, you, you hear of this, how many G's did you pull? Well, all you do is you take your uh, 34 meters per second squared, that's the acceleration, and divide by the acceleration of gravity which would give me about 3.4 g's, right? So in other words, you're feeling an acceleration upwards at about 3.4 times what gravity normally pulls down at.